Hi guys, it's Livia here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mix beautiful neutral greys by using a handful of colors. Neutral greys form a very important group of colors to help you create your painting successfully. But it can be quite challenging to mix them up, right? There are so many color choices at the shops, which makes the color mixing subject so overwhelming for beginners. Especially when you need to decide what tubes of color to use in order to mix the desired neutral color. In fact, you only need a handful of colors to create your paintings. And I like to keep things simple. So if you struggle to mix neutral grays and you'd like to learn simple ways to mix them to achieve more depth and harmony in your paintings, you might like watching this lesson. So without any further ado, let's get started! We are exposed to neutral colors constantly in our daily lives. In this scene, for example, the colored grays, also called chromatic grays or neutral grays, are present in all those elements seen there, like the greenery on the further away hill, the blue in the sky, which is not a vibrant blue at all, but a grayish soft blue, the deeper areas of the trees near the waterfall. As you can see, the water mist grayed those colors down. Also, the, the rocky cliff behind the waterfall becomes gray as a result of the color combination created by the waterfall washing over it. Even the waterfall, it's not white, it's gray, isn't it? The rocks on the right hand side are very grayish in various degrees from cool to warm gray. Also, the river water, which is a greenish gray, it's not a vibrant green at all and so on. The same applies to this scene here. That's the Botanic Gardens in Christchurch, New Zealand. It was an overcast day when I took that picture. Most elements there have a muted tinge, especially above the red line. Even the bright orange tulip flowers are not as bright as they'd be if it was a sunny day. Most of the time, our eye doesn't take any notice of the muted colors because usually the eye focuses on the vibrant colors as they catch our attention more quickly. Those more muted colors make our eyes rest and enjoy the view. The old masters like Leonardo da Vinci, Rembrandt and Delacroix, for example, learned that the muted colors had a crucial role in creating a successful painting and bringing color harmony to their paintings. Many other great masters, like French William Bouguereau, Swedish Anders Zorn and Spanish Joaquin Sorolla, expressed the colored greys with greatness, and I absolutely love their work. The French Impressionists took the neutral greys very seriously and added more color to them. Instead of using black or brown to mix those greys, they used the new theories in studies about color raised by Isaac Newton and other scientists in the 18th century to make their color sing. They created a new color language for the landscape painting as they combined those discoveries with painting outdoors. And the way I mix colors has been greatly influenced by those theories and techniques used by the Impressionists. So before I show you how I mix chromatic grays, I'd like to walk you through my process so that you can understand what direction you can take when analyzing your picture and deciding what neutral colors to emphasize in your painting. It depends on your subject, your perception, and the way you see and interpret what you see. Also the way you like to express yourself on the canvas. So let's take a look at some paintings I created a few years ago so that I can show you how I explored the colored neutral grays in my paintings. In this painting, called Best Friends, my dominant colors are blue and pink. So as I have these colors as my dominant group, I needed to connect the figures with the surrounding elements, and vice versa. 
so that my painting can have more unity. If you take a close look at both of the girls' skin, you will notice that I used a greyish purple and a greyish blue on them to simulate the colors of the surrounding areas bouncing back onto them. The same applied to the Westy dog. I also used some neutral pinks and purples onto the water, background and the wolf. That way I could create unity and harmony in my painting. You will see the same technique on this painting of the boy walking on the beach, where the neutral blues from the background reflect on his jacket and his skin, and the yellow from his jacket is present on the beach all the way along the shore, in various degrees of grayness. At the moment, I've been working on a series of botanical scenes, and I've got the same approach on this painting, for example. This is a massive painting, and I still have a lot of work to do until it's finished. So I'd like you to take a peek and see how I mixed the colors for the flowers moving away into the background. I painted the main foreground flowers first. That gave me an idea of what colors to use in the background. Then I got the colors I used on the foreground and desaturated them to make a more neutral version of those colors. The idea is to use them in a grayer version to push this group of flowers back and create the illusion of depth in my painting. If I had used the same vibrant colors that I used on the foreground, it would look like all the flowers were sitting on the foreground and therefore they would overwhelm the viewer. That gives my painting a rhythm as well as it guides the viewer eye into the painting in a pleasant way. So now that you've got a bit of understanding about the importance of the neutral colors, let me give you some insights on how to mix that group of colors. I won't go through the color theory because you can watch that on my video, Color Mixing Essentials. If you haven't watched that yet, you might want to check it out. So let me show you how you can change the intensity of a color first. So for my example here, I'm going to choose the ultramarine blue, which is the closest hue to my subject's color. So that's my first step, seeing what blue is the closest to your subject. So I'm just picking a random color. It could have been the thalo blue. I might even do the thalo blue as well, just to show you. Then the next step is to identify the value, the tonal value, or how dark or how light that color is. So if I add a bit of white here, see I can lighten that blue. So let's say that I want like a mid value. So then the next step is to uh, know what color to use to lower the intensity of this blue. I quite like to work with the color wheel and I'm um, using the complement color concept to gray my colors down. Sometimes I might go slightly off that, depending on the surrounding colors and on, on the majority of the colors on my painting. I might just choose colors that I have there, which usually they relate anyway. I can always find a complement color um, on my paintings. In this situation here, I'm going to I to get a bit of cadmium red, it could be alizarin crimson or any other type of red. It depends on what type of grey you want. Okay, so we've got cadmium red and a bit of yellow. And so the opposite color to blue on the color wheel is the um, complement color of blue. So I'll mix red and yellow in turn. So you've got orange. I want my orange to be a bit redder though. Otherwise I may end up with green uh, if I mix it with blue. Then I'm going to add a bit of white here just to, to soften the color, just to lower the saturation of that color as well, make it go a bit lighter, similar to this. 
So the next step is to combine them. So grab a bit of blue, then I'm gonna add a bit of this here. So if I want to change the color saturation just slightly, you know, changing the intensity very lightly, that's the amount I would be using of the orange if I want that to be more dramatic. I add even more. See how the color is changing? It looks like the color is getting darker, but in fact it's not. If we squint to white, they will be very similar. Then I take some off again and add even more orange until I shift the color to the orange side. So you can see that it applies the same to vice versa, you know, to the orange, using blue to gray it. So if my blue was lighter than that, I would do the same. So I would get more white, say that we have a lighter blue, like a sky blue, for example. But then I noticed that the sky that I'm painting is a bit grayer, so it's not as vibrant. I might just mix the orange again down here. See, this time I've got my orange a little bit lighter. It's almost like a, an orange red. The, it's the complement color principle. See, I add this here. Oh, what a beautiful color. Nice and soft. Gorgeous. It's more like a grayish blue we see on skies, overcast skies. If you're painting clouds, that's the way to go for the grayish areas. And then you can tweak the color um, there depending on your picture. But this is the principle to mix the grays. So if I was using the phthalo blue, so if I get a bit of phthalo blue out here, it's such a powerful color. So put a little bit down there. So I'll mix it with white just to lighten it so we can see the color changing more quickly. Then the same way, as this blue is a bit greener, it just shifts to the green side. I'd probably uh, make my orange lean more to the red side instead of having yellow there. So I would use the cadmium because it's very close to orange. Put this here, put a bit of white with it, and then we go. See, so that grays, that blue down and makes a neutral color, beautiful grayish blue until the color shifts to the orange side. So when we do this here, we're actually creating a bridge between, you know, the bright colors. So those grays create harmony um, on your painting. It creates a harmonious palette because those colors connect to each other. We can see both of them here, the opposites there in a gray form, in a neutral form. So that's a good way to harmonize your painting. If you find that your painting looks too vibrant and the colors are clashing, it might be because you're missing this here. Now I'm going to show you how I mixed the more muted colors to use on the background flower clusters of my big dahlias painting. So I'm going to pick just a few colors here to show you how I made them a bit more muted to give my painting the idea of distance to make the, you know, the, the flowers move back. I like using this green when I'm painting landscapes. It's the chromium oxide green made by Norma, but I'm pretty sure you can find that in other brands as well. And it's quite an old pigment in that it's uh, kind of a, like a mid-green opaque, it's not a vibrant green, so it's quite quite nice. So then I had 
the cadmium red there also i had my magenta primary red magenta made by my mary puro i love this color so just put it up here in the bit of white cool so i've got all the colors that i need to show you how to mix and then i start mixing some green i added a little bit of white just to desaturate that green see when i do this here the green looks a little bit grayer than that one i don't know if you can see there on the camera but anyway we leave it there then i got this magenta put a bit of red and white so that way i can tweak the value of the color first so i want that to be lighter then i add that green if i didn't have this green i would probably be using ultramarine blue yellow and a bit of white but i i like that one so then you know i can combine them if it's not the right value yet i keep adding a bit of white just little bits until i get the color right so if i go here put a bit more green and that grays it down even more if somehow i find that's too pink i add a bit of this more orange red or cadmium red light and then that tweaks my color so this is the color that i used on my painting then there are all the types of pink there so say i had this lighter version i had this already on my palette so i would pick from here because it's muted already so that helps me create harmony on my painting i can even make one between so that's all more muted and then with the greens i did the same so i got the green that was left a bit more white and then i used this thing to the green so i could make the green go a little bit gray and more neutral and that helps with the the idea of depth you know having the colors less saturated on the background and there is a lighter green there on the painting so i had yellow with it probably a little bit more white a bit more yellow yellow will make the color more vibrant but i just want to push the color to the um, yellow green side then the darker bluey green and then here i can use the lighter pink we know the red green opposite colors pink comes from red you get the idea so that that cancels the saturation of that color so that's what i used for that lighter more yellowy light green on the top yes and i probably used those blues here for those for those trees in the distance and the same i did with orange i probably used cadmium orange because it's such a powerful orange so i had the orange from the foreground flower then i added blue i could take either from here or there so if i take from there and see that's how we lower the saturation of the orange color and if i wanted that to be a little bit light a bit more yellowish just add some yellow and that's it so that gives you a bit of a, an idea on how to mix those colors and to be honest those grays will be the most important colors that go on your painting to make the bright colors work together to make them pleasing to the eye to make your painting look better so there you have it a few different ways to mix gorgeous neutral colors or chromatic grays to help you create more harmonious and powerful paintings I hope this video has helped to understand the process behind the color mixing and how to change the intensity of your colors when needed. 
I'll be posting more videos about my massive daily painting as I develop it. I've been filming it from the very beginning and I can't wait to finish it and share with you some of the techniques I used during the development of this painting. So I still have a lot to do there to finish, but well, let's enjoy the process. If you liked this lesson, remember to subscribe to my channel for updates and more videos like this. Don't forget to tap the notifications bell beside it to be notified when I post new videos. Feel free to share that with your painting groups so that other people can benefit from these lessons. And if you'd like more in-depth tutorials, you can go to my courses page on my website and check out what I've got there for you. You can find the link to that in the description area below this video. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, Pinterest and Facebook and view there what I've been working on at the moment and to participate in giveaways. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Happy painting!